thank you everybody for for joining this evening and thank you for either helping with the christmas bird count this past year or if you were at home and couldn't go out you were uh, on the sidelines cheering us on saying go 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 so um, we did a fabulous i think we did a fabulous job this year and uh, you know i appreciate photos coming in and i hope to hear stories from from some of you uh, about some of the things you saw or whatever you know something that was just kind of special to you for you um, and again, I just appreciate everybody's uh, time that you took uh, this year. I know it was a tough time right after the day right after Christmas. Um, and we'll talk about this year's Christmas bird count. Yes, I'm thinking already for the end of, of 2022. <laughs> but sometimes you got to think ahead. But um, and I hope everybody's healthy. I hope uh, you know your families are doing well and friends are doing well. And if you're feeling kind of the, then again, there were several people who did or, or had to drop away this year just because they wanted to be safe, um, not spread any virus anywhere. They thought they may have been exposed. And we appreciate that a lot. I think, you know, we're all smart people. Birders are smart people. So, um, you know, we, we understand the science and it's great. All right. Um, first of all, does anybody have anything to say and just say, hey, everybody? Hey, no. All right. Good to see everyone. All right. So I'm going to share my screen and bring it up. And if you have uh, the on the side panel, if you have all the little people's um, pictures in the gallery, you can reduce that by hitting that uh, little one little slash button and then you, you all the people disappear and just the show is on. All right, so yay, Christmas bird count 2021 wrap up. And this is the weather that we had for the day. It was actually pretty lovely. Um, Penny O'Connor gave us this photograph, and this was at one of the cemeteries. Uh, at, first of all, can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Yes, good. Okay. Uh, this was at one of the cemeteries in Olmstead Falls. Um, with, I don't know if it was the Sunset Memorial or Turkey Foot or, Chest, or Old Chestnut uh, Grove, um, but they, they did a little bit of hopping and jumping around. So um, again, pretty nice weather. We really couldn't have asked for much better um, compared with last year when we were trudging through quite a bit of snow. Alrighty, so just again a refresher. This is our circle, and you can see uh, the center point is not exactly in Lakewood, even though it's called the Lakewood Christmas Bird Count. It's more in oh Rocky River, West Lakeish area, and the center point, and then seven and a half miles around, and which does even go into Lake Erie. Um, we did not have anybody doing any pelagic birding. But what we try to do is get as much of the lake shore as possible from um, uh, Edgewater all the way, again, across the border. Yes, we do cross co county borders into Avon Lake. And then further south is pretty much the Middleburg Heights Strongsville border. Um, west, again, going a little bit into Lorraine County east just a little beyond right around the zoo area brooklyn um sometimes we do a little slop over since we have so much of our area is in the lake we do kind of maybe the parma heights area brooklyn um this 
southwestern area around North Ridgeville, we will kind of slop over a little bit onto the land. And you can see all these pinned areas are areas that we generally do cover. Again, oops, looks like the lake is kind of covered up a little bit, but a lot of these areas, the zoo, a lot of the green spaces are the metro parks. We have neighborhoods that are covered, backyards, things like that. Oh, happy, happy birders. Um, Marion Krauss gave us this nice photo of folks that um, were hitting a number of parks and a cemetery as well and had some pretty nice sightings. Joanne, if you wanted to add any more to this, because there's Joanne Kubicki right there and she's joined us tonight. It was a little slow, except for the, you know, the great horned owls. I don't know if you're going to talk about them or not. Um, they will be on the list. I don't know if I'll put any of the, I don't think I have any of the photos up uh, of the owl. There were a lot of photos that were submitted. Right. It's just, um, we weren't seeing much. We knew great horned owls were in the area and um, they've been on our account a couple of times. And we passed the gentleman. Oh, oh. We'll get to him. Oh, good. Then yeah, I won't yeah. say anymore. <laughs> yeah, I got I got a picture. Good. Yep. Okay. And then, then you can you can add add some some uh, uh, comments at that time. That would be so awesome. Okay, sounds good. All right. So again, the area is covered. Big Creek Reservation from Brook Park all the way south to Main Street and Middlebrook Heights, the Bradley Woods, Co Lake, and you can you can read this. There were feeder watchers around the airport. The Lake to Lake Trail, Lake Isaac, Lake Abrams, Fowles Marsh or Fowles Wetland, uh, part of Mill Stream, uh, Puritus Wetlands, the Renaissance Retirement Community, Rocky River Reservation, golf courses, uh, the Southwest area, cemeteries, Valley Parkway, Tri C West Campus, Zoo. We got penguins on our checklist, right? No, wrong. There we are. Yeah, so um, new birders, well, Todd and Bo. Todd is the gentleman, Bo is the dog. And uh, Joanne, did you wanna talk about this gentleman? We passed him on the trail. We were coming back, we passed him on the trail. He asked what we were doing, we told him, um, about the owls and stuff. And he said he was, would love to see one. Um, so he passed us up and uh, we, Marion and I were hearing an owl calling, a great horned owl. And we kind of weren't sure where it was coming from. Eventually we kind of pinned it down a little bit. And this guy come running back with his dog and saying, I found it, I found it. <laughs> and so it was just right by the parking lot. Um, it was calling, and from there it flew into a tree further away. Um, so he, we let him see through the binoculars, and while I was looking through the binoculars, another one flew in. Wow. So there were two of them sitting there, and once the other one flew in, they it stopped. the first one stopped calling. Mm -hmm. um, Which park? Oh, this was Elmwood Park in Ooh. Rocky River. Thank you. Very cool. Um, so he was real happy. There was another lady came along and let her look through the binoculars too. And so it was really nice. He was really excited. He's, he never saw a great horned owl before. So nice. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. I think, I think that's one of the, the beauties of being out birding and birders is that, you know, we're, we like to share that information, you know, kids or adults or uh, did the dog look through binoculars? <laughs> No, <laughs> he was wondering what in the world we were doing, yeah. walking back and forth and looking. And yeah, <laughs> he so just thought, wanted to go on his I, little walk. Yeah, I thought this was a fun photo. Thanks for, and I appreciate Marion sharing this. Yeah. So, a little bit about our Lakewood Circle history. Um, Western Cuyahoga became a chapter in 75, 1975. And that was also the first year. <clears throat> that we sponsored the uh, Lakewood Christmas bird count. 
And uh, right now it's, we've just had 46 years of Christmas bird count because uh, 2021 is the 122nd CBC because the CBC started in 1900. So you actually had a, it's not, not following the year exactly. <clears throat> So um, 46 years of Christmas bird counts. And right now, all I can think of is two compilers, Don Ultimus. Some of you may have known Don. Um, he was a naturalist with the Metro Parks for a long time, um, with the headquarters being Rocky River and a couple of other areas. He was at the zoo as well. And then myself, I don't know if there was anybody before Don Ultimus, hence the question marks. Probably look that up in the Cleveland bird calendar. Oh, good idea. Thank you. I'm, I'm sure there was somebody. There probably was, and, and I could not find that in the CBC records that National Audubon had. So, um, and old issues of the Cleveland bird calendar are on the, are on the Kirtland Bird Club's website. Okay. All right, so um, we had, I guess there were, there were 35 participants on that very first count. Um, the lowest number of participants was 18. And I'm not quite sure what, what, what caused that. Was it the weather? Was it something else? Um, in 2019, we had the highest number of participants, 98, which was actually very good. Wasn't bad this year. Um, lowest species count, only 56 in 1990. Again, I, I have to look back to see what the weather was like at that time. And so far, uh, 2020, last year, we had the highest species, a number of species cited with 89 and five during count week. Um, some of the temperatures, coldest temperatures, um, below zero in 89. Uh, maybe that's why there were so few people. Let me zoom back here. Oh, no, that was 87. That was only 18. So 89, I guess there were more than that many people that went out during that cold weather. So started off below zero and went up to a whole eight degrees. Um, we had some pretty warm temperatures a couple times, 50s and 60s in uh, 84 and 96. And of course, knowing Cleveland, um, not a whole lot of sunny days, either cloudy, uh, partly cloudy, but again, that's what, that's what Cleveland is. And so far, uh, what I've been able to find is 146 species have been tallied over those 46 years in the Lakewood Circle. And one of those species is cute little tufted titmouse. Thank you, Michelle, for sharing that. They're starting to sing. I don't know if you heard, let's see, yesterday was pretty sunny. I heard chickadees singing, tufted titmouse calling a lot. And here's some more cute birdies, uh, birders, I should say. Um, Jason and Laura did the Tri-C Western Campus and boy, they found a lot of stuff. They, they, you guys are hired. You are so hired. <laughs> so Jason, if you could tell us what you were doing in this photo. Sure. Yeah. So um, I, uh, from time to time, when I hear interesting birds, I just use my iPhone to record it. It's just really simply, there's a little recording app and um, you'd be surprised at the quality of the recordings that, that come out. Um, but when we were uh, at Tri-C, we, we heard and saw, I think, like all of the robins in uh, Northeast Ohio. So if you've been missing any robins this winter, they were all at Tri-C. And I think there were like 116 or something yeah. in like this little tiny tree stand of like four or five trees. And the robins were just making such a racket that um, it was really nice to hear. And I just pulled out the phone and made a little recording of it so that uh, we could have a little record of the moment. Yep. 
Yeah, I did have, I did uh, listen to that recording and it sounded like spring with all the robins singing. And maybe some of others of you found that same thing. Uh, I went out owling that morning uh, and, you know, just around, it wasn't quite sunrise because I, let's see, I finished my owling at around 6.45 and there were robins singing at that time. So, so again, it, it's pretty nice. And for those of you who haven't been to the Tri-C Western Campus, it's really a, a nice flat area to walk. Um, there are a couple of uh, city or town parks adjacent to it. One of them is James Day Park, which belongs to the city of Parma. The other one is Nathan Hale Park, uh, which is part of Parma Heights. So again, they're all nice little green space. It used to be the former Nike site area. And uh, what, Cryo? Yeah, Cryo Hospital. Nancy? Yes. The Linways want to know if Jason and Laura can play that little soundtrack. Uh, I don't know. Are you able to do that? I, I don't have it all together to do that. Yeah, I, I, I probably should have put it on here. So, um, sorry. Uh, it's on our eBird page. That helps. There you go. Okay. All right. And here's some denizens of the Tri C Western campus area. Um, here's a couple of graduates, <laughs> male house sparrows. Look at how cute they are. And this kind of really goes along with a, a blog I had written, oh, a couple years ago for Western Cuyahoga called the lowly or awesome house sparrow. Um, and it just talks about, you know, how uh, these birds have just adapted so well to here in North America. And you notice where the nest is, it's in one of the little openings uh, in I think the word college. Um, and uh, you, you know, you might see their, their little messy nests in other places too. Um, by the way, if you didn't know, the little black bib on the male house sparrow, you can barely see it now. But as the winter moves along and these, these feathers, uh, these black feathers are tipped with kind of this grayish brown and that grayish brown just wears away, wears away, wears away. So by the time the spring is around, this will be a nice big black bib. So they don't molt those feathers, it, it's simply uh, the wear of those those tips of those feathers. And similarly on the head, you know, the bird will get a little bit more chestnut and, and brown on the head. And um, so just because wear on the feathers. So fun fact. Now this female house sparrow, she is definitely um, she's getting her, her degree in nest engineering. I think she's done a, a fabulous job. What do you think? I think those are fabulous photos, just so fun. All righty, so here is a beginning of our checklist, and I'm gonna it's it's divided up among three pages. So take a, a just a, a quick look here, and you can see I put numbers in, and I will scroll down after. People take a little bit of a look. A couple things I want to point out. Um, the northern pintail, that was a pretty good number of, of pintails. Um, two different sightings. They may have been part of the same flock. Who knows? Gull numbers were gall numbers were really, really low this year. I mean, ring-billed gulls. 68, 58, that's like a drop in the bucket. Um, oh, by the way, look at gall. It's got three L's, a little gall. <laughs> How about that? Gall. Um, no, normally, uh, some of the years we've had like 20, 35, 20,000, 35,000, 36,000 ring billed gulls, but the lake wide open, pff, they were just all over the place. Uh, Red-breasted nuthatches made a pretty good showing. Look at how many brown creepers people had sighted. Ten. Ten brown creepers. That's like, that's crazy talk. I don't think we've ever had such a high number. 
two winter wrens, the double crested cormorant numbers, that's pretty high, 50 birds. The turkey vultures and black vultures, those black vultures are still hanging around the uh, Holy Family Church in uh, Parma Heights, or I'm sorry, that's Parma there. And they, they float between there and uh, maybe even as far as Brecksville, the, the town square in Brecksville. Alrighty, so again, ducks, mergansers, uh, red-breasted merganser, that's a really low number again. There should be way, way, way many more, but again, with the lake wide open, their numbers were just really, I mean, they must have been just scattered. 10 eagles, wonderful. Our red-shouldered hawk numbers, I don't know where the red shoulders were this year. Um, they should be in like the teens, um, you know, mid to upper teens, but no, not this year. Um, here's all the robins that the... Uh, Jason and Laura had seen. They saw all 1,132, not. <laughs> there were a lot of robins this year. Um, snowy owls, good sightings. A lot of, lot of mockingbirds, 10 mockingbirds. That's kind of a high number from all over the place. A ton of kingfishers, 14 kingfishers. That's kind of unheard of. I don't think we've ever had anything quite that high. We did get all of the woodpeckers, redheads, red bellies, yellow bellied sapsucker, downy, hairy, and uh, pileated will be on the next page. Our redheaded woodpecker numbers, oh boy, that's I think only two sightings, uh, one bird from two places. <coughs> And uh, purple finch were really about the only winter finches that, that people had, some folks had come to their feeder. Um, we hit all the, the um, falcons, kestrel, merlin, peregrine falcon. Uh, killdeer, that was a, those, those were pretty good. Again, two different areas had killdeer. Uh, no great numbers of different kinds of sparrows. Red winged blackbirds, that's a fairly high number. Rusty blackbirds, that's a good one. And some of our special ones that were obtained this year uh, a red throated loon and short-eared owls. The short-eared owls were viewed uh, at the, um, around the airport. Um, sometimes it's a little hard to be able to see into the airport. The, the security there is pretty, pretty strict. So, uh, so on count day, we had 85 species. Yay! It's wonderful. And one bird during count week, which was the Eastern Screech Owl. We did not get it on count day. So I commend everybody. That is a, that is a, a really nice number, 85 species. So we'll take a look at a, um, some of the birds that were, again, a little bit more unusual. Um, we have the uh, long-tailed duck that was cited, uh, I think there were two, um, it may have been the same bird, but it was listed on two different lists. Um, and you can see it, it doesn't have the long tail. The, this is the winter plumage. Um, take a look at your field guide. I don't know, maybe Paula can help me. I'm not sure if this is a male or female. I, I did not do my research and look it up to find out if this is a male or female. Not so unusual anymore. Uh, wild turkey. Uh, Penny O'Connor had this uh, nice tom turkey move through her backyard on Christmas count day. Hooray! Um, I have turkeys around my neighborhood. Not uh, 
they, they have not showed up since Thanksgiving. I hope nobody ate them. Um, but uh, yeah, turkeys, turkeys seem to be getting a little bit more common, certainly in the spring, summer, and early fall. You can get good sized flocks, at least around this area, the Lake Isaac, uh, Main Street, um, uh, Baldwin and Wallace Lakes area, um, Rocky River. I don't know what Rocky River's turkey population is. Maybe somebody can chime in perhaps. I don't know. See these pictures? <laughs> It's not unusual, but I just thought this was an awesome picture. I like great black back gulls, and Chris Pierce took this wonderful gull photo. A nice picture of a turkey. Now, obviously, this was out farther. Um, did Anna join us um, tonight? Yes, she just did. Okay, fantastic. Well, thank you so much, Anna, for getting this photo of the red-throated loon, uh, that very narrow bill, and the whitish, very whitish throat. Um, I know this was, again, a, quite a distant picture. You can see it's a little grainy, but that's okay, not a problem. Um, this was put on the uh, eBird uh, site uh, as, a, as proof, so this is great. Oh, by the way, all of our records from, from our Christmas count, as well as several others in this area, go to a regional compiler who is Craig Caldwell. And I got all our records, I, I got all our things in and he didn't question a thing. Everybody was cool. Thank you, everyone. All right, uh, the sharp shinned hawk, nice sighting again at the Tri C West campus. Um, you can see a nice squared tail on this bird. You really don't see a hood on its head like a Cooper's hawk would have. So that was a nice find. Again, one, one sharpie. Usually we get one sharpie um, in our on our Christmas counts. Um, and we got one this year. I'm going to have to bird the Tri-C West campus a little bit more. I kind of went away from there a little bit, um, but it's again, easy walking, um, nice birds. And uh, again, there's parks nearby that you can, that are all, again, all adjacent. And a lovely rough-legged hawk by Jan Brumfield. This was also near the airport. Does anybody know why they're called rough-legged hawks? They actually are a hawk with some pretty tiny feet. So they're a little smaller than a red tail, but, but they got tiny feet. Rough-legged hawks have feathering down their legs. Mm -hmm. So the rough, not rough as in fluffy, but rough as in, hey, it's, it's got feathering down its legs. It's a beautiful bird. Ooh, look at the snowy owl. Paula, did you wanna add anything about your snowy owl sightings? Oh, I guess not. Ever unmute. Paula, you have to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> oh, that's all right. Sorry. That I, was I, the I've first got, bird got... of the day. Whoa. Yeah. Just pulling into Edgewater and the pole. It had been sighted there before, and I was really glad it was there. And I stopped the car, and I think Jim McCarty saw it too. But then an eagle flew over, and it flushed so but it, it came back later a lot of people saw that bird wonderful thank you now i don't know uh ted ted got this photo of i don't know if that's the same owl no 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 that's the one in clifton park that somebody um marty burrows and a lady she was birding with and oh clifton yeah park 
that's the bird they found. But I called Ted and his family was coming home and he stopped and he took the picture and that's the one I shared. Oh, wow. Fantastic. But Ted also, Ted Gilliland did bird with us in the morning. Okay. Where is Clifton Park? The western end of Lakewood is called the Clifton Park area. Wow. It's exactly before you go over the bridge. It was right at the top. You mm -hmm. could, it was really close to Lake Road to the bridge. I'm just going, I'm just scrolling back a little bit, seeing if I can. Nice. Fabulous. Wowee. Good sightings. Now, I will tell you, this photo was not taken during the Christmas bird count. Um, I took this from a bunch of photos that Tom Fishburne had taken elsewhere. But just wanted to show you what a short-eared owl looks like um, and in flight. Um, I just have the one picture here of kind of the bat bird and from the back. They do like to be out more in the uh, evening. They can be out active during the day as well. Um, you really don't see ear tufts on this at all. Looks almost barn owl faces, like a face. Um, but then they have a lot of this dark um, mascara around their eyes. The buffy in the wings. They are like the evening or, or you know, later evening time, the crepuscular time um, of a, a northern harrier. Harriers will, will hunt during the day more often, whereas the short-eared owls like similar habitat and like a little bit more in the evening or morning, although they will hunch during the day as well. A lot of times they'll be perched on branches, but I just wanted to toss this in so people will see what a short-eared owl looks like. And again, we've got our turkey vulture and black vulture uh, on um, the uh, church. Turkey vulture is above, you see with the reddish head, little longer tail, white beak or light colored, kind of an ivory colored beak. The black vulture, hardly any tail um, and a much, much slimmer beak. Um, the birds are hanging out again on that, on that church, but I have did not see a black vulture last couple times I've gone by, I've just seen turkey vultures. A little bit closer view of a black vulture. Again, that really thin beak in black, not, not ivory or, or light colored and a black face. If you remember last year, the turkey vultures and black vultures that were roosting in that area got into a bit of trouble because of the rain, the freezing rain, and then the heavy snow. And that's when Tim Jasinski and several people came to the rescue and corralled a couple of the birds, um, were able to get some into carriers um, and put them into a car, a warm car, to kind of thaw them out, at least get the ice that was on them because they were grounded. They just had so much ice on them. So I think the birds are a little happier this year that the weather has been better, or at least was better for the Christmas count. Now it's a little chilly outside. I'm sure the black vultures are thinking, why did we stay <laughs> up here in Northern Ohio? Why are we not down in Florida? We heard at the Kirtland Bird Club that Jen Brumfield's car will never smell the same again. <laughs> I can imagine. <laughs> yes, having nice smelly vultures, probably defecating and nice warm car. Oh boy, I'll tell you, you hang those little, those little pine things in, uh, like those little pine scent thing, scented things in your car, probably doesn't do a whole lot of good either. And here was a nice surprise again at the Tri-C West campus. 
uh, a Merlin. There were actually a couple of Merlins. I hope I'm, I've got that right. There were two. And um, I know I had seen a Merlin the, like a couple days beforehand at the uh, Cuyahoga County Fairgrounds. And I put that out, you know, just jotted it down. Hey, this could be a count week bird. But getting it on the count day, getting Merlins on the count day, awesome. And I have seen them at Tri-C Western Campus before, but it's been, again, a number of years. So you notice where the bird is perched. It's sitting on some of the uh, light fixtures by, I'm guessing, either the ball diamonds uh, or, yeah, I think that's what it is, or there's a track nearby. These were at the um, that park adjacent to it, and there it's Nike Park, okay. Nike Site Park. Mm -hmm. That's adjacent to the Tri C Ball Diamonds. There's a little woods, and then there are just more, like ten more Ball Diamonds. So there were two of them on opposite posts, sort of both looking facing each other over the field. So okay. uh, they were they were just hanging out, letting me take pictures. I have found that Merlins are really quite tame. And again, if anybody else who has had experience, you know, being near Merlins, they just kind of sit there and watch you. I like the way this one's, you know, got its head turned completely backwards. It's cool just watching you say, hey, this is my best view. <laughs> um, so yeah, they're, they're quite tame and you can walk very close to them. The one that I saw at the fairgrounds, I tried to get a picture using my camera on my phone and holding binoculars up and I was very unsuccessful. Um, but yeah, just let me walk right up and it, it's very cool. So I hope people will get Berlin's for this, this year. Now, not an unusual bird. I mean, we get song sparrows year round, but this one is kind of fun because uh, Al Rand got this one. And it's a partly leucistic. You notice it's got a lot of white feathers around the face. Um, looks like maybe a few white feathers towards the back. So just, just kind of an unusual bird, pretty. And you might get birds looking similar, um, not just song sparrows, but I've seen robins with some white feathers. I've seen cardinals. Um, sometimes it's caused by an injury. Sometimes it's just you know, one of those things that happens when they're hatched, um, it's, genet it's genetics. Um, you might see red and blackbirds that have a white feather or two. It just, it's just kind of fun, it really is striking. It catches your eye. So if you'd like to learn a little bit more about Christmas bird counts, of course, to go to the National Audubon site um, our, our archives of uh, Western Cuyahoga Lakewood Circle are on our website. And I just think that this is a beautiful picture. Look at that, look at that reflective pool. This is right in front of the, the main building there, right? Yeah, a lot of times I would see killdeer around this pool. I'm, I, was, I was always hoping that a killdeer might be around. Um, Snipe have been around there as well, but I just like the way it's all reflected. Most of these are, are oak trees, so, and they're really growing nicely. It's, it's just really a fun campus. And I just like the sky there too. That's a, that's a beautiful picture. And Michelle had a lovely downy woodpecker in I believe the Rocky River. All right, so you got your calendars out, you got your phone out. All right, scroll to December 2022. And the CBC, haha, guess what? Both Christmas Eve and New and Christmas Day, as well as New Year's Eve and New Year's Day are falling on Saturdays and Sundays. Do I want to have a Christmas count on those days? No. So what to do, what to do, what to do? Well, we'll have it on a weekday. Yes, we have done this before at least once, maybe a couple times. 
And so I really would like to have our Christmas count on Friday, December 30th. Um, again, put, put it on your calendar. Don't schedule yourself for anything else because we want a, an awesome 2022 Christmas bird count. And I want to thank again everybody for joining us this evening, for being out and about on um, Christmas Count Day. And uh, I think that is it for the day. All right. So I don't know if anybody had anything else you wanted to add, something that you thought was, you know, fun, um, areas that we probably need to cover better. Um, I don't know. Uh, anybody want to add anything? Please unmute and, and chat. So hello, everybody. Um, I'm Mike. And uh, Michelle was my wife, Michelle. We have been doing this bird count. Uh, this is our second time. We did it last year. Um, she's on another meeting for something else this evening. And uh, to say that we are um, beginning bird counters is kind of an un under exaggeration. Uh, <laughs> we fell into this uh, basically because we're always, you know, we're out walking and we found this as something to do while we were doing that. Um, so we are by no means, um, well, we're still trying to figure this all out, uh, but we're interested. So if anybody is, um, can give us some recommendations or if anybody is, you know, out walking and they wouldn't mind a little company so that we can kind of see what's, you know, uh, what we're seeing and, and uh, how to do this um, so that we can enjoy our time doing it too. We'd, we'd love to hear some suggestions or um, if anybody's willing to share some time, let us know. Uh, where do you live, Mike? We live in Lakewood, just on top of the Rocky River Reservation. So um, not only do I find myself down there all the time, uh, just walking around for, you know, and, and looking, but, um, you know, we spend a lot of time down there. Hi, Mike. Uh, right uh, by my, the marinas. Pardon me? Hi, my name is hi. Michelle Brocious. I'm a field trip coordinator for Western Cog Audubon. We have a, a bird walk once a month, the second Saturday of every month at the Rocky River Nature Center at nine in the morning. So you're more than welcome to join us. And it's a, a really easy walk, um, nine to about noon. Um, and the bird walk leaders are great. So you will learn a ton um, okay. with us on those trips. And then you can go to our website just to see what other bird walks we have throughout the year as well. Okay. And this is... So these are the bird walks, and you said you do from nine to noon at the nature center. I know where the nature center is at. So yes. thank you. And no problem. Is that like um, when did you say it, it, that they are? Is it once well, a month? Yes, once a month, the second Saturday of every month. Okay. They happen to be called second Saturday bird walks. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, second <laughs> Saturday walks. Okay. Now to add to that, Michelle, unless you were going to mention nope. some things, Michelle, go ahead. To add to that, um, we are starting up our Tremont Towpath Urban Bird Walks, uh, and that is going to be on the fourth Saturday of the month. Uh, so we're starting that in Jan. So this, yeah, uh, that's on the twenty second. I'm looking at the calendar here. And we meet at a, the Metro Parks parking lot off of Abbey Avenue, just down from Sokolowski's. Okay. Well, yeah. And we go down along the river. And I mean, it's fairly easy walking and nice small group and it's just, just fun. Um, yeah, there'll be, and there's some spring bird walks that are going to be coming up as well. So if you check the Western Cuyahoga Audubon website, www.wcaudubon.org, okay. very easy. I have one suggestion. What's that? Um, for Michael and, and his wife. You know, yeah. you live close to Rocky River Park. Yeah. 
the li the little one on the lake. Do you know where that is? The little one on the lake, yeah. Okay, because you know, I, I, from Lakewood, I'm in Western Lakewood too. Just going back and forth to many <laughs> places, I'll just flip in there, scan. I mean, that's a great spot to take a look at the lakefront. Mm -hmm. I think Mike and his wife are, are looking for not just looking at birds, but you know, learning a little bit more. Maybe look look at, learning about field marks or behaviors or things like that. So. Yeah. Um, but, you know, we appreciate new birders. We appreciate, I call them seasoned birders, um, <laughs> okay. not old well, birders, <laughs> but yeah, seasoned, you know, the folks that, um, and seasoned might be salty too. You just never know. Um, but yeah, we, so again, everybody is really sharing of their time and expertise. So Michelle gave you some good information. And again, we have the several other people who, uh, will lead walks. Okay. Well, I appreciate that. And we will, we will look into that. It was the uh, Audubon uh, Society. WCAudubon.org. WCAudubon.org. Okay. Yep. Thank you. And we will try not to call a woodpecker a redheaded eagle again. So there we go. <laughs> yeah, I saw that on your list and I'm like, what in the world did they see? <laughs> but you know what, I, I gotta be honest, when we did it last year, um, we had, and we understand completely that everybody's gotta do this kind of on their own because of COVID and everything like that. Um, and we just thought we would do this because we wanted something to do while we were walking. And we were out there the first time. I think it was, you know, we got out there early. We were excited to do it. And I think we did the Bid Creek Parkway walk last year. We right. had to shorten ours this year for different mm -hmm. reasons. Um, and the funny thing was, is I think it was about 45, 50 minutes. We're like, we didn't see or hear a darn thing. And we didn't see a bird at all. And we're like, we have got to be the most, you know, goofy people to be out here trying to do this. Um, but it turned out different. We had a lot of fun both times. So um, now we're just trying to, you know, broaden a little bit of our knowledge because um, we have none. So that would work. Yeah. Well, Mike, I think you brought up a good point. You know, a lot of times um, people are walking, you know, and again, everybody here who's birded, um, you know, you're out, you're like, man, it's quiet, man, it's quiet. And then you hit a little bunch of birds all together. And you're like, yeah. oh, there's robins. Oh, there's this, there's that. There. And then, mm -hmm. then it gets quiet again. So you get these little winter flocks. Um, and then, of course, when the weather's good, like we had for this Christmas count, when things aren't concentrated, I mean, if you have a bird feeder in your backyard, you know, this, this cold weather and the snow that's going to be coming, um, was, is going to concentrate things. So, um, it just, it's just what the weather and luck brings us. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it was, it's, it's been fun. We're enjoying it. Um, and actually we laughed about it cause we do have like a ton more birds and, and species, uh, we think we're seeing in our backyard now, um, more than we did on both of these walks. <laughs> well good because i think you're in our count circle so you can always we're do feeder right. yes, watching too yeah so we're after, right there in it so we're yeah. having fun with that wonderful wonderful <laughs> oh ken did you want to say something i just uh yes i'm i'm not ambulatory anymore but uh the uh you can learn a lot at, at the feeders, and uh, some we we live uh, in the southwest corner of Parma now. But the, today that we had about twenty species at our little feeder, and um, including a uh, um, besides the, the robins, the thing that a flicker came by, and wow. it was it was uh, and a couple hundred starlings and so on. But uh, <laughs> um, but but you you'll see these same species out on the trails too so uh, sometime i'd be delighted to if, if you're if we ever get together if you 
I mean, COVID and all being considered to uh, to just uh, meet with the two of you if that if that's something you would like. And I give you our my I mean it's Ken Ballas is my name and our my home phone number is four four zero eight eight six six four six two. I grew up in this area, but I was gone 50 years too, but uh, it, it's, uh, yep, I'd be very happy to uh, sh share with you, or maybe we could go over to try c 2 and observe there, it, and then there was a lot there this year. That sounds excellent. We really appreciate that. I'll talk to her, Ken, and I really appreciate you sharing that with me, and I did write your number down. So um you know i i would not mind whatsoever reaching out to you and uh seeing if if you could help us along thank you thank you appreciate your interest thank you all righty i know our time is running short here um again if anybody else we really would like to, again, welcome you for the, the next new year. And I hope everybody has a good, birdiful new year. Um, some people are already well on their way uh, in January to working towards their 100 species in, in one month, January. Um, Marianne, what is your number now? 77. Oh, 77 species already. Whoa. And it's not even the middle of the month. You're going to get to 100. Oh, yay. Yeah. And you still have the mockingbird in your neighborhood. Yes. Yes. Yeah, I find a... mockingbirds in around the city way more than out here in the, you know, the, the wilds of Middleburg Heights. <laughs> All righty. Well, again, I thank everybody for being here this evening and um i want everybody to have a good evening and i'll see you on the trails birding um e-birding whatever so thank you again and uh appreciate it thank you nancy thank you nancy thank you nancy thank you thanks so much yep thank bye -bye. you everyone. good good job